diehard fans. It's not usually it's not just casual regulars that come in. You know, it's yeah. like real nut right. fans. You know, I mean, uh, the, you know, the best fans. So they were like just shocked mm -hmm. beyond belief. It was great. Were you doing much material from Lap of Luxury? I don't. We didn't do any. Was that right? Well, it wasn't out. Uh huh. So we didn't bother. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, old bands will say, "Well, this is a you know, song for a new album." You like five of those, you know? Nah, People fuck just that. Four. Yeah. What <laughs> the hell is that song? <laughs> so, like, uh, you released "Lap of Luxury" and then went on the road. We did. We did a bunch of songs that we weren't, didn't even have released. We did. We started out with a song called. Uh, we started out the show. A song called "Loser." It's great. Is this an original tune? Or yeah, oh yeah. It's just a real hardcore. It's like cold turkey type of song. Brings back and people uh, couldn't think. Like, what in the hell? And then it's like, wait a minute here, it's cool. Maybe a little bit like the first album. Yeah, it was written right at that time. Was oh, that right? Well before it. Uh huh. There's a lot of people still just you know like the first album. Uh -huh. I think like the first album is the best. Uh, yeah, it could be. It's, it's, a, it's could unique. Be. Uh huh. How do you look back at that now? Like what you guys did. Uh -huh. I, mean, it's I already been I like the. Years. I like the uh, third album better actually, but. Yeah, that was like, also considered a classic. Too. Yeah, I thought we were getting on a roll then. Uh huh. Actually, a, a couple of places. And then recently. the Budokan came out and sort of screwed us up. And then, and then why? Why do you think it screwed you? Well, up? I don't know. I don't think that's a very good album, really. Mm -hmm. It's we were a lot better than that. The songs, you know, it, uh -huh. it, I don't know what the charm is in it. I beyond me, I don't think it sounds good. It's like sort of half-assed performances of some, you know, surrender and yeah. There's better. I think the studio ones are better. Uh -huh. I want you to want me, no, but. Yeah. The studio version of that's really weird. Well, it's kind of wimpy. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. real wimpy. That's not the way the song sounded. That uh -huh. kind of sounded like it. That was Tom Werman's idea to make it sound like that. But uh -huh. That's not the way it originally sounded. That was if that had been on the first album, it would sound like the mm -hmm. Budokan version. Actually, come to think of it, I, I have like a, a, a um, what do they call bootleg? A bootleg I bought many years ago called Samurai Rock Band. Mm -hmm. have you ever seen that one? I probably have. I don't recall it. <laughs> Great. I mean, that, I mean, I think that really captures the, the spirit that of song, the song, or the, I mean, the whole thing. The whole thing. You Maybe did like, what is it, Please, Please, Mrs. Please oh, Mrs. Please, Mrs. Had the Bob Dylan song? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. I mean, uh, so it's a long version, but still, you know. Down really, on my knees, it's a yeah, cool right. song. Yeah, I mean, but it really can't. riffs. And yeah, it, it, and it captures the energy of the band, mm -hmm. which Budokan didn't really do it, I don't think. Ah, Budokan, I don't think it's that good of an album. And live albums are lame anyway, I think. You know, mm -hmm. they, you know, so... That's why you don't hear many of them really anymore. There's just a, yeah, you just don't sound good. It's just, they're like greatest hits. Mm -hmm. and it was only released here because we had hits in Japan, and it was never intended to be released anywhere else. So mm -hmm. it's a total fluke. Yeah, it was the fluke of flukes. I thought it was our weakest album. It's the biggest one. So mm -hmm. go figure. There you go. Um, well, I actually didn't. And every every city we went into, they'd have like, these big press parties. Like every time, it was big, like in a lot of different countries. So every fucking night. Let's have a big Japanese party, Japanese food <laughs> every day in every city. Like, yeah, yeah enough, yeah. enough. Like, why? He said, Jesus, we're glad we didn't do it in yeah. Russia or something. Yeah. Russian food every day or something. Awful. Yeah, Rick, Rick told us about it a couple of years ago. God, he, he would say, like, every meal, every day. Like, this is, please. You know, you're, you're in Des Moines, Iowa. The Japanese food's not too good there. <laughs> All right, let me have something special. A new Japanese restaurant tonight. Ugh. <laughs> Pink fur balls. You're in London, and the Japanese food stinks. You know, their food's no good, much less the foreign food. Oh, Rick was telling us at the time people would pull him over and say, "Well, tell me, Rick, how are things in Tokyo now?" Anyway, this oh, was like years goes, after you guys. Oh, were. on and on. They always associate us with Japan, which is fine. Uh -huh. But every interview, every time. Uh -huh. But then again, lap of luxury sort of broke new ground. As a matter of fact, I mean, didn't that sell uh, a similar number of records? No. Oh, it wasn't even close. No, it was close, but uh -huh. it didn't. No. I mean, it went gold-like, didn't it? Oh, it was, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. I think a couple million, I don't know. A couple million is pretty, pretty good. If, yeah. if, it went, if, it, if it sold that many. Yeah, it did. But trust me. <laughs> so getting back to, um, let's see, where were we? Okay, you guys put out Lap of Luxury, and then you went on the road, right? Mm, yeah. Well, huh? before it even. I know, you were on, you first, we first, kept going. Yeah, first we never got, stopped. Yeah, yeah. First of all, you got together, you were playing clubs, you went in the studio, did Lap of Luxury. No, we didn't. No, we didn't play before we did Lap of Luxury. We didn't play at all. Mm -hmm. We just played after we finished it, and in, in between it coming out and it and being finished. So you got together and went, to, went directly. Yeah, we didn't go play. A lot. We didn't need. Yeah, we played together for years. We didn't need uh, to but, go play. But, but after you rejoined the band, you guys went directly back into the studio. Yeah, after a few months, that we had to write the songs first. Uh, well, so you took. I. I. I, I you have it mixed up. Yeah. No, we didn't play before we did the album, at all. 
So you contributed to some of the songwriting. Maybe. They did a little, but they didn't do any of the songs. So I got. They had the guy uh, John Brandt. He uh, he. It was great. So I'd get to sit around, and they they'd have to go out and play. It's like, see you guys, have fun. <laughs> Well, what, what do you mean? What, what well, they were doing shows because you know, because to keep keep money coming in. Mm -hmm. and so they, I was do, doing the record. The oh, other guy I was see. playing in the oh, band. Okay. So they were out there working. I'm sitting around. Okay, okay, yeah. You were you were officially you know back in the band, but they had to go on. The well, road. sort of unofficially. We didn't know what was going to happen. We just mm -hmm. didn't know if it was going to work out or what. You know, so uh -huh. they they were they had engagements and everything booked. So we were putting the album together. They were working, and you know, I was just sitting around in the hotel. Finally, man, I wish I could still do it. I want to get that guy back. Made up like <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll come along and see you guys after the show. Meet me at the uh, karaoke bar. He's your, he's your ghost. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, so you got what? So you guys? Okay, you put a lap of luxury, and then what happened? What happened? Yeah, did you go out? Did you go on the road? Or we were just we never stopped. Mm -hmm. Just the places got a little bigger. Mm -hmm. We went down to Australia when it came out, right when it first came out, and we were playing nightclubs down there. And everybody was saying, uh, oh, it's great, you're jumping on the revival bandwagon. We've been down there, you know, like the monkeys and the searchers. I'm like, what the fuck you? What do you mean revival? It, 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 they that. thought we broke up for 10 years or something. I don't know what. They were jumping on the band. So then, I mean, every interview was the same thing. Oh, this revival thing is great for you guys. Think, what are like the, what are the adventures? Uh -huh. You know, please. And then, then the album went number one in Australia, and we came back at the end of that year and did huge hauls. So mm -hmm. they got to eat their words. <laughs> Five. Well, things a lot of people think that because you know everybody sort of has come back from the seventies in one form yeah, but or another. The Cheap Trick never stopped. They right. kept doing albums. Right. It wasn't like they and they were doing my dingaling or something. You know, like <laughs> you never wrote a song for thirty years. Right. You know, it's ridiculous. Right. What happens to this? Why can't Chuck Berry write even one song in ten every ten years? Why? What, well, what even happens? Even originally, old Chuck there, you know, a lot of his songs kind of sound the same. He just kind of changed the words around. Yeah, but he just stopped completely. What happens to those guys? Well, you get old. You get old. A little too much booze. A little too much blow. You know. Let's face it, you burn out. I don't know. It's weird. Well, it happens. I mean, it, well, look at, you know, Aerosmith. I mean, it's like drugs, alcohol. They were doing fine. Well, the thing is, they were almost burned out, though. Well, they weren't, though. They, they still... People weren't buying the records. You know, I talked to Stephen Tyler recently. He said, you know, he would, like, wake up in the morning on the floor, you know, at a party. And he said, oh, Stephen, you were a real asshole last night. And after a while, he finally got, you know, cleaned up his act. Right. And now the band is, you know, in the studio making great records again. I think it's a matter of, you know, sort of getting your act together. Yeah. The thing is, with Cheap Trick, though, I mean, over the years, the albums were great, though. Yeah, you know, I know. In the early 80s, even when you were gone, it was still really good stuff. Yeah, they're not heroin addicts or anything. I mean, t you're talking... No, they, they were doing... guys are like this... They get drunk once in a while, they're shooting heroin and doing <laughs> speed balls and stuff. That's a little extreme. That goes beyond having, <laughs> you know, a few too many drinks. Jesus. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, to see you lying in the corner, <laughs> blood all over the floor. The band was just sort of forgotten about, it, you know. Yeah, it I don't know fun. what happened. I wasn't there. I don't know what. Uh -huh. I don't know what happened really. Uh -huh. Were you bitter in the first few years, mm, or were you? I don't was think it more so. regret, I, you know, regret? It just was weird. It's like you know, because I used to sing those guys all the time. Mm -hmm. So right. you know, it's like your family just being taken away all of a sudden. Right. And you, I mean, you must have like asked it what's going on, or you know, checked the, the, the not really, trade no. publications to see you know what well, how not, the records are doing. Not. Not really. Really, not anymore. We're doing anyone else. You kind of wanted to put it behind you. I don't remember. I don't. I don't I didn't really think about it. But after about like you know six years, I mean, you must have thought you would never go back to it, or had it always been in the back of your mind that one day you would return. No, I never thought about it. You know, I can't believe that though. How <laughs> can you ever <laughs> think about it? I mean, you must have thought that you know there's a, there's a place for you in that band still. Well, I don't know. No, I never thought about. It. I just thought that I'd do something else. Just kept trying to you know put something together. Mm -hmm. And I guess with the last band, you came pretty close. To Joe Perry and I were putting a band together when he got back with Aerosmith. Is that right? Yeah. Huh. It was going to be Joe and uh, maybe it was it, Billy and Rocky Burnett. You know them. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, Rocky Burnett has got great song. You know, Rocky's. I think Rocky's this the son of Johnny, and Billy's his brother. He's his cousin. Uh -huh. Is that right? The way that works, the guy from Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, I know the guy from Fleetwood Mac, right? Fleetwood yeah. Fleetwood Mac, but and Rocky is his cousin. Uh -huh. Is Rocky, is Rocky Billy, the guitarist? Is, oh. Yeah, he's a guitar player. Yeah. They both are. There's not a lot of guitar players from band Joe Perry and then the, the Burnett. He sings though. He's a great singer. Uh huh. So wait, you had almost gotten some start with him. Yeah, and well, yeah, he is Joe. Joe, the Joe Perry project when he was in Los Angeles, and we were talking about it. 